Hello, friends. This is Pastor J.D. Lee from Harvest Baptist Church of Allen, Texas. We're about to take you to one of the messages from the pulpit at Harvest Baptist Church, and we pray that it will be a blessing to your life. Pray that you'll enjoy this song just before the preaching. And may God richly bless you. Thank you for listening. Was the captain of his ship in World War II, and on a shelf full of medals was a picture of his crew. From my window I'd see him pass by, stop and salute the stars and stripes in my front lawn. He'd tell me all about his back overseas and how God never left his side through all of these he taught me how to serve and do my part and love the Lord with all my heart oh I can hear him say just like it was yesterday I believe the cross is the way salvation I believe his word is the hope for our nation and I firmly pledge all my allegiance to one nation under God for me and you that's what I believe and though that brave man is now passed on the truths that he stood upon live on in me and I believe the cross is the way to salvation I believe his word is the hope for our nation chapter number 21. First Kings chapter number 21. We're going to read starting in the first verse. The Bible says, And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spoke unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house. And I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. Well, how many times do we in our lives have something we go through and we're just willing to take a little bit of compensation for what we go through huh. and we're not just going to hold on to what we've been given because, well, I could get something out of it. Whether if we're talking spiritually or physically, spiritually we're going through something and the devil offers us, you quit this and I'll just give you a little bit of comfort and ease and I won't be so hard on you. And we just go ahead and say, I'll take that. You know what? I don't care. I'll take that. Read over in verse number three. The Bible says... In verse number 3, And Naboth said unto Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give, ye, give thee the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. This evening with the help of the Lord, I want to deal with the subject of how much are you willing to pay for your freedom? 
Amen. How much are you willing to pay Amen. for your freedom? Let's pray. Amen. Dear Lord, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to open your word, Lord, oh, and preach. God. I'm so Give thankful that we have the freedom to be able to carry yes, your word with us everywhere oh, we're going. God. Open up and proclaim what your word says, and nobody can do anything about it. Yes, Lord, I pray that you never let us get over the fact that we still have the freedom to worship oh, yes. you, Lord, in the United States of America. Yes, the day Lord. we get over that, Lord, will be the day that you take that freedom from us, Lord. I just want you to help us to constantly be thankful for that freedom, Lord. I just want you to help me this evening, Lord, as I just proclaim your word unto your people. Allow me to, Lord, just allow your people to see you through me. Everything that be said, let it be said from you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, so much for your blessings. Your wonderful name, Lord, I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In America, we have had something that has been passed down from generation to generation. And sadly to say, as it has been passed down from generation to generation, our country has decayed morally and spiritually. Right. And we are in a serious, serious situation now because of that where now we don't even have the proper fear for the Lord in our country that we used to have. Right. Our leaders no longer are servants of God and servants of the people. They are rulers over the people. That is not how it was made to be in America. See, the issue is we as children of God have stopped letting have stopped telling the government what to do and started letting the government tell us what to right. do. That is not the way it's supposed to be in America. We are soon to lose our freedoms that we have earned in America by those who have sacrificed their lives laying them down if we do not soon change that and turn back to the Lord. So we're going to look at tonight, how much are you willing to pay for your freedom? It is an investment that we all are going to have to make in our future. Investing in your future is what we're all about. The reason we plan a church here is to invest in the future. We want future generations to be able to have the word of the Lord, and they want, we need them to have a local church to be able to assemble it. Right. Once Daddy passes off the scene, he's no longer going to be the preacher. There's going to be another preacher, another right. pastor that steps up. So you want to continually invest. So the first thing we're going to look at is how much are you willing to pay for your freedom and your involvement in our country? Yeah. Just because you are a child of God and a Christian does not mean you do not have a place involved in our government. You see, this is a sad thing that goes on nowadays where people believe that they do not have a place in politics. Right. We do. We are supposed to influence them. We're right. the ones that are supposed to influence them. You see, we have separation of church and state. They can't tell us what to do. We tell them what to do. Right. That's how it is in America. And nowadays, nobody tells anymore because the Christian said, well, I can't vote for that. I can't do that. I don't agree with that. You, I, I can't do that. It doesn't line up with me. You don't have to vote for somebody. You can vote against somebody. And we've done that before. There's different things you can do, but you need to be involved in your country. You know, if that's just you know, telling the gospel somewhere or being involved in maybe being involved in politics, being involved in your city council or whatever the Lord wants right. you, there's a place for you to be involved, making a stand, making a difference in the future generations to come, making an investment. It is a sacrifice sometimes that you're going to have to make. And if it, the Lord called you to it, you know, it's hard nowadays to say the Lord would call you into it, but... If, if your calling is to go serve this country and God's called you to do that, it's a hard thing. Somebody has to do it, though. Right. And it's sad that the way that our military is nowadays. But somebody has to serve our country in the future generations. The many heroes of past days that have, have laid down their lives in the National Cemetery in Arlington, and you walk through there and just white after white after white, all you can see for miles is just white, white crosses. Yeah. And it burdens you. Yeah. All those people have laid down their lives for hundreds of years for this country. They've laid down their lives. They did not care. They didn't think twice about it. That was what they knew they needed to do. What's the difference nowadays? Nobody, if we, Lord forbid, if we had to go into war, would our country even be ready to go to war? Probably not. Right. This isn't the America it was generations ago during the other wars. We're not ready for that because we have had decay in our country. And it is sad that we are in the place that we are in now where some people aren't even proud to be Americans. Right. It's sad. That is what we are. We're Americans. We're supposed to be proud of that. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're supposed to have that pride of our country. But sadly, nowadays, not everybody is because of the decaying in our land that we are involved in. Yeah. So that brings me to my second point, something that we really need to make an investment in and pay the price for. That is going to be our children. Our children. Right. It's, that's the next generation to step up. You see... We send our children off to everywhere except for where they need to be. Nowadays, we don't care what we want them to do. We send them to the public school who indoctrinates their minds and fills them with garbage. It's not right. even true. Right. They're not even learning the real history. They don't know what's the first thing about our freedoms. And sadly, nowadays, I heard that they don't even know the Constitution of the United States anymore. Mm. 
They don't even make them read it. They don't make them learn it. They don't need to know it. They don't want them to know it. And that's what our children are learning. We have to make an investment in the future generations to come if we want America to still have the freedoms that we have now and hold dear 20 years, 30 years down the road. With that, he's made an investment in his children. He's taught us how to be patriots. One thing about us is we are patriots. That's right. the reason we blow up the sky for the 4th of July is to show our freedom. Right. That started all the way back in 1776, and it's going to go forever in this family, at least. That's all, I'll tell you that much, okay? <laughs> My children are going to be the same way. But we need to instill that in our youth. We need them to know. The reason we do this right. is because back here down the road, these men laid down their lives right. so that we can be free, so that we wouldn't have to be oppressed, so that we didn't have to belong to another country and we could have our own rights, so we could serve God. Right. The number right. one reason was freedom of worship. That's the number one reason. I'm going to give you a little definition here of freedom. I wrote the definition down. It says the power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. Okay. We lost our freedoms a couple years ago. Yeah. And the issue with it was nobody stood up to it. Right. We were not able to speak. We were not able to assemble. They, they restrained us from doing it. Pastors were thrown in jail for doing it. Right. They lost their freedom. And what did we do about it? We just laid down. Right. 95% of the churches across America closed their doors and said, you know what? If that's what you want, that's what we'll do. They took away our freedom and they did it. To see if people would actually stand up right. or if they would just do what they were told. Right. And sadly, they just did what they were told. And they know if they can shut down the church, right. they can shut down the influence that tells the people what to do. That's what the church is for. The Lord's influence in their lives. If we do not have the church, why do we need the Constitution? Right. Because then we're going to start with removing the church. Well, then we're going to knock that. We're going to knock out that First Amendment. And then what comes after that? The Second Amendment right. And they're going to constantly remove those amendments. But it starts with that freedom of speech. Right. And freedom of religion. It's something that we should have stood up for, but we didn't. I wonder if our future generations down the road are going to be able to stand up against the country if a time of tyranny ever came. Or if they would just say, you know what? Grandpa down the road said that we didn't have to do that. And if the government told us to close the doors, well, then we need to close the doors. And we need to do what they say because they're in charge of us. And we need to fear the government because they can put us in jail. Well, how about we fear the one who can send us to hell, not the one right. who can put us in jail? Right. You see, we're fearing the wrong people. And you cannot have a sense of fear if you are going to want to keep your freedom. You see, these men that laid down their lives, they didn't have one ounce of fear in their body. They boldly marched out there. They boldly proclaimed that they were going to fight for their country. They did not care. They didn't care. All the men through generations, they were men. And they knew what needed right, to be right. done was a time and act of warfare. They weren't scared. There weren't no people around there that said, oh, we can't shoot guns. Take away the guns. No. The reason we have the Second Amendment was to keep us safe if a tyrant right, of the right. government ever came up. And that's why they want to get rid of the Second Amendment. All this stuff is just trickling down and getting worse and worse and worse. It's horrible. And 95% of this all stems down to one thing. And that's what I'm going to deal with for the good part of this message. And that brings me to my third point, and that's our involvement in the church. Yeah. This is where things started to decay in our country. The church needed to be involved in everything. Right. And the church has a place everywhere. Right, right. See, once we started removing the Bible from our schools, our generations to come did not understand what the Word of God said. They did not care. They do not know hardly any day. I mean, it's sad. We talk to people sometimes, they never even held a Bible in their hands. Future generations in America, a country that was built upon the principles of God's Word, they don't even know what the Word of God is right. anymore. You hand them a Bible and they look at it like it's just a random book. They don't understand it. They don't respect the book anymore. And because of that, they don't respect that flag anymore. Right. It starts here and now there. And now we have schools removing the American flag from their school rooms. And right. replacing it with pride flags. Pride flags. There's nothing that makes me matter, one, as a Christian, than removing the word of God. Right. But two, as a patriot, removing the American flag. Right. That flag is red for the blood that was lost and shed. That white represents those crosses that are all in our national cemeteries. It's patriotic. 
When you're removing that, you're removing the generations before us. Right? What, in 30 years we're not going to have American flags anymore? I don't believe so. We need to stand up now and make a difference while it still counts. And the church house is the number one thing that needs to get back to being the church house and not the social house right. where everybody gathers together and has a little fun greeting. Because that's not going to make a difference in the day that we live in today. We need preachers and pastors that are going to stand up again and proclaim the word of God. Right. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and seek and ask for the old. That's where's the good way and walk therein. That's how America was blessed. Right. We stood on the Bible right. and we walked in the Bible. We lived according to God's word. I have a quote that George Washington made. He said, it is impossible to rightly govern a nation without God and the Bible. Yeah. It is impossible to rightly govern a nation without God and the Bible. Right. And the two things they have removed out of our government is God and the Bible. Right. And look at the situation yeah. our country is in today because we removed God and the Bible. It started with, well, we don't need to have the Bible anymore. We don't need that. You know, they lay their hand on the Bible when they get sworn into office, right. if it's done rightly. But do they actually even know what they're putting their hand on when they open their mouth and speak blasphemy, saying that they are going to hold to the truth of this word and they're going to rightly do their job? So help them, God. Do they actually care? They actually care that they have lied out of their mouth, placing their hand on that Bible? Do they even know what that word says? Have they even looked through the Bible? Even read one verse of the Bible? It's that. It is, it's just, it's horrible. And I can't imagine, I can't imagine what our children are going to have to live through my, my, my. if this does not change in the next five years. Five years from now, if we're going down the same road, we might not even have the Constitution right. anymore. God help us if something doesn't change within the next couple months in this country. And the deal, the worst of all, is people are scared. Yeah. You see, January 6th was a horrible day, but not for the reason they want us to believe. Right. See, January 6th was a showman that the government doesn't care about the people. Right. And that we are owned by them and that we can't do anything. You see, that's why it was completely organized and looked that way. To make us scared right. to stand up to the government. You see, they knew if they could instill fear, which they did through COVID, they know that they can scare him, so all they got to do is use a little force, a little bit of force. And that's exactly what we have going on now. Yeah. Where people, American citizens, yeah. are afraid of their government. You can just go and talk to somebody and say, you know, talk to them about the country a little bit. And they'll be like, well, I wish we could make a change. I wish there was something we could do differently, but uh, there's nothing we can do. I mean, what can we do? Right. You see, they failed to forget that our forefathers did not care about who was in charge. They did not care about a king who sat on a throne in another country and wanted to rule over us. They did not care about that. They didn't care about dictatorships and communists who wanted to rule over everybody right. and own the people and rule them with an iron fist. They did not care. They did not care that they were going to be shot. They were going to be burned. They were going to be sliced in half. They did not care. They did not care at all. They stood up to them. Right. They stood tall and they had faith. Now, there's another line of people, too, that are heroes, that are heroes for the church. Yeah. You see, our patriotic heroes are the reason we have the freedoms here that we do today. Right. But there's another line of heroes down the road that gave us something way more important than that American yeah. flag. And that's this book right here yep. that we hold dear. That we hold dear right here. This book right here. Men, like that man right there, yeah. that sacrificed everything they had. Men worse than him. You go read through that child blood. Just look through their Fox's Book of Martyrs. Just look through everybody through years and years and years. Hundreds, thousands of years. They've just been murdered. And they've been martyred for the Lord. And they did not care at all about what the people said. They stood tall. They proclaimed God's word. And they did not sit down and close their mouth. Right. That man right there was offered a way out. He was. Yep. He didn't have to be beaten. He chose. He chose to be beaten. You see, they were going to pay him off. Right. They were going to bribe him and tell him to leave him alone and not speak bad against the Church of England. The, the Catholic Church, which isn't even a church, right. that's what they are. They're the great whore. Right. That's what you have going on there. That's why they're going to be judged so terribly because look at how many thousands and millions of people have been altered by that. You see, the Pope the other day, did anybody hear about what the Pope said? 
He announced there is no hell. Right. He, he said there's no hell. The Pope. The Pope. The man that has the most influence, sad to say, in modern day Christianity, right. which we know it's not real Christianity, but he has the most influence on everything he says. People listen. Right. And now he says yeah. there's no hell. Yeah. You see, my Bible reads different than that. Right. I don't know about your Bible. My Bible tells me there is a hell. And there's going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing your teeth. And the reason the Pope says there is a hell is because he's going there. Right. And he wants to be less convicted about it. He doesn't want to hear about it because it makes him convicted because he knows he's going there. And he's going to burn in hell for the rest of his days. Right. He's going to live forever in a place where there is no there's no day. There's no sun. All you can see is just flaming wells. That's all it is. And he knows that he's going there someday. And that's why he doesn't want people to talk about it. See, I was talking to somebody the other day. And they, I was talking about hell. And they were, but the Pope said hell isn't real. Mm. Well, what did God say? Right. That's what we go by. We do not go by men's teachings. We go by the Lord's word. Right. That's why we don't listen to what the government tells us to do in the right. church. Right. That's why we have separation. They cannot come in here and force their religion and their beliefs on us. We are not at all involved with that. At Harvest Baptist Church, we do not let the government control the church. Right. The church is controlled by God and the pastor. Yep. God tells the pastor what to do, and the pastor tells the people. Right. That is how it works. Right. There is no government involved right. in the church. See, that is what these men stood up for. They knew. They knew there was no place for that. That was not free. They knew they were slaves of religion. And that is what religion is. Right. They were slaves. And they wanted to be free. Yeah. That's all they wanted. That is why they came over here on the Mayflower. That is why they started this great country that we live in today. Because they wanted freedom. Right. They did not care what was going to come and what was going to happen to them. If they were caught, they knew that they were all going to be murdered. Yeah. They knew that they were. They knew they were. And they did not care. What would you go through? And what would you be would you care at all if you were caught? 30 years down the road, they banned this Bible right here in this country. What would you be? What situation would you be in? Would you care? Come on. Would you just go hide and say, you know what? I don't need it anymore. Did you really have it in your heart? Oh my. If all it takes is for them to say one thing and you right, run away right, from right. it. How many people's true motives were revealed during these past few years right. with everything we've gone through and they just closed their mouth and did not care? That's exactly right. You see, what we need to do is we need to get back to crying aloud and sparing not and lifting up our voice like a trumpet, just like he said this morning. That is what we need in this land today. Yep. We don't need people to be quiet. We don't need people to sit down and just listen to what they're told to do. You know, we were just, I was looking at the church to see that YouTube page on, I think it was Friday night after we had done the show, and I found a video of the pastor up there, and he went to jail. Yeah. He was arrested two years ago, about a year and a half to two years, yeah. for singing in front of a medical clinic. And either he was going to sign the ticket or go to jail. Yeah. And the ticket, what did it say, Kenzie, for the children singing too loud? The ticket said on it, the children were singing too loud. That was what the reason was for the ticket. The children were seen too loud. Mm -hmm. And of course, like any real man of God, right. he wasn't going to sign that. That's so what right. he did, he got arrested. Of course, they released him after the processing and everything. Because real people, real people that are actually involved, no, you can't arrest somebody for that. Because that's right. a straight violation of their First Amendment right. right. We can't remove that. They know. That's a, they took an oath to uphold the Constitution, right. not to uphold how they feel. And if you can't uphold that, then you have no place in that line of work. And there are some people out there like that, sadly, that are involved in law enforcement. Right. The majority of them are not. But there is a small population of them that is going to be that way. But what's going to happen if they are told to no longer uphold the Constitution and that their job is to find every single Christian and lock them up right. and silence them? And if they don't be quiet, you put them in jail. How many of us would stand on God's word and proudly proclaim, we do not care, we are not ashamed, we are going to lift up our voice, right. we're going to cry out, and we're going to stand on the same things that our forefathers stand on in our religion, in Christianity, the forefathers of our church, they went through some persecutions, and we need to understand we're going to stand for the same persecutions. Right, right. You see, this doesn't just involve our country. This is going on for longer than our country's ever been around. 
Before our country was ever around, we had the Word of God. Right. Before our country was ever founded, we did. But the only thing these founders wanted was freedom to use that Word of God the way they wanted to. That's what they wanted. You see, people will tell you, and they're learning today in our schools. I, I was doing some research. They're learning in our schools. The different four founders said that religion and Christianity has no place in our government and in our, in our world. And this was never said. I never learned that. I never heard that. This is what they're changing to teach our children. Right. They're trying to teach our children this stuff. This isn't real. This is fake. Fake news. Okay? That's what real fake news is. Okay? And nobody cares. Nobody's standing up against it. I don't know about you, but when I went to school, I learned two things. One, I learned about this Bible. Yeah. And I learned about this country. Right. That's what I learned in history. And I learned the truth. Not the fake stuff that's been fabricated and processed today in this cancer culture situation that we live in today that all needs to be abolished and banned. The whole entire school system's a mess. It needs to be torn down and built back up right. on the word of God, which newsflash, if you didn't know, that's something President Trump's adding back into our schools. Right, right. Is prayer, which this country needs. This country needs prayer. It doesn't need less. That's what we need to get back to, is praying. Everything in our country needs to start and end with God. Right. We open in prayer. We close in prayer. That's how it's supposed to be. Yep. See, yeah, they may pray in Congress. They may pray in the Senate. But they even know who they're talking to. I'm afraid to say, sadly, most of them do not. Right. Now, there is a small majority there that do know who they are actually talking to and have a proper respect and reverence for his name. But most of them just use that name whenever they get mad or stub their toe or something happens in their life. That's the only time they ever let his name come out of their mouth. And it's sad. It's sad. So I ask you, what are you willing to pay? You see in this text, we're going to read a little bit further, and I'm going to show you about a man who made the ultimate sacrifice for protecting his, his land that was given to him and passed down from his generations. Verse number four. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. He, he was a big whiny. He was a big whiny. He wasn't much of a man. I'll tell you that for sure. Yeah. He wasn't much of a man. Right. And he sure, his wife sure was not. He wasn't much of a lady, that's for sure. <laughs> but Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. See, that's what they want to do. They want to give us something better in their eyes. Yeah. But we know what the true uh, greatness is in our country. They want to replace it. They want to give us something better. Oh, well, the grass is greener over here. You know, like we always say, well, there's probably a sewage tank under there or right. something. You know, there's always going to be something over there. There's a reason that it looks so pretty and it pleases, it pleases your eyes. They want it to. They want to draw you in and attract you. That's exactly how sin is. It wants to entice you. It looks beautiful. You get over there and realize you're, you're just standing in a mess and you're ruined for the rest of your right. life. In verse number 7, And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreel. I don't know about you, but that sounds like Joe Biden. I'm sorry. It yeah. does. It does. That woman's got issues. She thinks she's running for president or something. she got issues. It's verse number 8, So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. I wouldn't be surprised if Jill did that. Just saying. And sealed them with the seal, and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in the city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letter, saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people, and set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him, that he may die. I don't know about you, but I don't remember reading anywhere in my Bible, anywhere, where it said that blasphemy against the king was a sin of death. Right. There it is not a legitimate charge. You see, what we have going on nowadays in our country is people standing up against their government and they're saying stuff against them and they're charging them with bogus charges because they don't like what they're hearing. That's exactly what was going on in this text. Yeah, yeah. In verse number 9, verse number 10, uh, actually verse number 11, sorry. And the men of the city, even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants in his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them, they proclaimed a fast and sent Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city, and stoned him with stones, 
that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. In verse number, in verse number 12, 13, it said something there that caught my, caught my eyes. <coughs> the people of Baal witnessed against him, even against Naboth. What are you going to do in your life if somebody comes up against you with a false accusation right. of something that you've done? <coughs> Are you just gonna you're just gonna be like, oh who cares? You're gonna fight it? See, we're all gonna go through things in life where somebody is gonna make up a false accusation against us. And it cost a man his life right here. Right. You see, this man was a man who was not gonna let go of what the Lord had given him. And he was gonna hold on to that because he knew that was his inheritance. And it actually costed something. It costed him his life. That's why I say, how much are you willing to pay for your freedom? Right. The price is high. Yeah, it may even cost your life. Are you willing to lay down your life for your freedom? Come on. For your future generation's freedom? For your country? For your church? For Christ? Are you willing to? Or are you going to be one of the cowards who closes their mouth, yeah. sits down silently, and remains silent so that they do not get persecuted? And oppressed. It's a serious question, and sadly, something that we may even have to deal with someday. Right. A hundred years ago, forefathers would have never thought we'd be going through that. They'd be floored with what our country has gone through. They would roll over in their graves if they knew right. what this country has become. It's a terrible, tragic day that we live in where we even have to think about this in America. But because of the spiritual decay in our land, this is where we're going. That's it, so. That's what it is. There's nothing else that revolves around. It is the spiritual decay and the lack of men of God standing up and proclaiming God's word. It does not matter what the people think, what the world thinks, or what the government thinks. The only thing that's going to matter when we come to the end of our lives is what our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has to say. Yep. It's not going to matter at all what the government told us to do. We are not going to be answered for how we served our government. Right. If we paid our taxes every year when they came around, if we did everything legally to the government, we are not going to give account for that. But what we are going to give account for is how we hold up the Word of God. Right. Did we follow every principle and commandment that is in the Word of God? Did we teach the future generations that come after us how to serve the Lord and how to have a walk with God and love our country? Did we? Or did we just say, they told us we can't do it anymore. I'm sorry. My, my, my. You see, it's sad that it is coming to this, but it's something that we have to have a conversation with now. Because what about six years down the road? What if, what if the right person does not win this election coming up in a couple of months? Right. What if we have to go through four more years of tyrannical government? What are we going to do? Are we going to sit still? just let him do what he's done for the past four years? Are we going to get out there and proclaim God's word and say what was wrong and what was wrong before is still wrong now? It doesn't change because of the year. It doesn't change because of the century in which we live in. The year or the date does not matter. You see, what matters is what is written in this word. Right. And my Bible still says that a man who serves God is going to be held to a higher standard. Yep. You see the feet of them that preach the gospel. The feet, which I don't know about you, but feet are disgusting. Yeah. It's, the, it's one of their most dirty body parts. Because everywhere we go, we use our feet. And nowadays we wear shoes and socks, but and back in these days when the Bible was written, they wore sandals or they didn't wear shoes at all. And they would walk everywhere. Of everywhere. Everywhere. Can you imagine how dirty their feet were? Sure. Can you imagine? You know, when Jesus washed all their feet, they were humble. I mean, that's the most humbling thing, probably. I can't imagine, like, the way that they did it. Now, we don't, we don't teach you feet washing. It's something we do. That's not one of our ordinances. But, I mean, just to get down before somebody and wash their feet. What a humbling experience. Yeah. Even for the person whose feet are being washed. Because you know where you've walked. You know where those feet have been. You know how dirty they are. But that's what we are to do. Their feet are beautiful. They're beautiful. 
I don't read about no politicians being beautiful. Right. I don't read about no king, or no Pharisee, no no Sadducee. No, the preachers that proclaim the word the Lord of God. Says. That's who we need to hold to a high standard. That is who are our heroes, not our government, not our politicians, right. not our leaders. It is our pastors and our preachers. Those are who we need to understand. God has placed them in the place that he has put them for us to listen to them. You see, back a long time in the history of America, what was it, the black coats? Is that what they were? Yeah. The black coats. They were all pastors or preachers or men of God in their churches. Yeah. And their number one goal was to make sure this country abided by God's word and the people were free. Yeah. They were involved in government. They were involved in politics. They were involved in militias. <laughs> but they were men of God. What is our, what's our deal? Right. Oh, well, it's a later day. There's government issues. Why can't we be involved in that? Right. It is our duty and responsibility. Just because we go to church, just because we're called to preach, does not mean that we do not need to have an involvement in our community. You see, we say, well, let's reach out and tell them the gospel. But how else can we make a difference? Maybe you could be a senator. We need godly senators. Right. They stand alone. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be hurt. But we need people that are godly there. We need godly mayors. Right. We need godly city council people. We don't need wicked people. There's no reason children of God cannot be involved in that. It's Billy Kirpin said, I believe it's a senator, right? Right. He's a senator. Man of God. Right, right. But he's a senator. And he's right with God in church. Yep. And he's a senator. Right. He's involved in his government politics. You know, it's there's no excuse for us. Just because we are Christians does not mean we don't have a right to go out here and proclaim. We need more people standing up and proclaiming that this is the word of God and this is what this country needs to be ran by. That's why that book behind your head that you look at every time you stand up in Congress and in the Senate is hanging up right there. Right. That book is what this country was founded on. And that book is what we need to get back to. Right. It's the only thing that can save us. You see, let me see who said it. Oh, do, 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 do. I don't have written down who said it. I believe it was... I believe it was Mr. Hamilton. I believe it was Mr. Hamilton who said it. He said that Christianity and good morals are the only solid foundation of public liberty and happiness. Yep. The only solid foundation of public liberty and happiness. Have you noticed how the happiness has disappeared? Mm -hmm. There's nobody happy anymore. Nobody's happy. Oh, they may be happy for a little bit during Christmas time when everything's all bright and beautiful. You know why that is, though? See, they don't really understand the reason it's such a beautiful time. The reason we put the lights out, the reason everything's so pretty and it makes everybody so happy, the reason for that is because of Jesus Christ. Right. And it is the love that is shared. You see, that is our job. We can do that for a week or a month. Why can't we do that for a whole year? Why can't we share the light so brightly to everybody for a whole year? Right. Not just because of special holidays right. like Christmas and Easter where people really understand, oh, well, we need to go to church. They know that. How do they know that? Right. Even worldly people know that. Well, we need to go to church because it's Easter. Well, how do you know you're supposed to be in church? Well, because Jesus died and he rose again. Oh, you know that? Well, how do you know that? Because our forefathers right. and our religion and our Christianity stood up and proclaimed, this is a sacred holiday and we need to celebrate it. We didn't have to put that on the calendar, but we do because it means something to us. Right. But why are those the only times that we actually are pressed to tell everybody, oh, are you coming to church this day? We're going to have a big celebration. Every single church service should be a big celebration. Right. Because right. we are celebrating the right to freely assemble and proclaim God's word. And that's why this holiday is so important to us to actually understand what it means. You see, there's many people that don't. It's sad. Kids nowadays, it's sad to say that some of them might not even understand what this day actually means. They don't even know. What was July 4th, 1776? What happened that day? Do you know what happened that day? Do you Come know on. the true story behind it? Come on. The things that were going to happen that were prevented by men that were warriors, that the whole town was going to be bombed. I never learned this in school. This is stuff even I didn't learn. But for further research, you learn more. The whole entire town was lined underneath with explosives that were set to detonate exactly at 1 o'clock when they were going to sign that constitution into effect. The whole town was right. supposed to explode. It was supposed to explode. 
But a man, a man saved the day. And he kept every single one of those from going off, risking his own life. But what did we do? We don't care anymore. Right. Because that was back then and this is now. And we've had freedoms for so long that they do not actually mean anything to us anymore. We do not understand these men and women that have died and lost their lives so that we could have our freedoms. That's what this day is all about that we're about to celebrate. That's all it's about. A time to reflect and remember what it has cost for this great country to come to where it is today. That's why we do the fireworks. That's why we do it. I know Mama gets a little crazy with us because me and I are crazy. We're crazy about it. But it's just, it's the patriotism yep. that we have for our country. We can't buy actual missiles because that's illegal. Or we would. So we can do the closest thing to it. They go up and go boom. That's what matters, right? Goes up and goes boom. But it's just a sign to show yeah. we know what this day means. Right. And we want you to know that we still know what this country was. Right. You see, that's why a couple of years ago, when they told people they couldn't assemble on the 4th of July and they couldn't pop fireworks, there was more fireworks popped than ever before. Right. I remember seeing a photo of Los Angeles, California. Yep. The sky, the Los Angeles, one of the most stupid bases, okay? It's just, that place is horrible. That, that's the most godless place. I, I'm, I'm almost 100% sure of that. It's horrible what that place has turned into, what it used to be one of the best places in America and what it's turned into today. And it really, it all revolves around the lack of churches there. There's, there's hardly any. There's just a few, and there's millions and millions of people. There's no way they could reach them all. They need way more. But they still understood. Well, they said they were going to arrest us if we did it, but we're still going to do it. And they did. And they made a stand. And everybody across America saw what they did. Right. We all saw photos of it. We, didn't, we know we weren't there, but we all saw photos of it. What about the church? What about us? What about us make a stand? There were a few pastors who did make a stand during COVID. One of those being Brother Clark. Pastor Clark was arrested because they were meeting and right. singing. But he didn't care. See, that's what we need to do. But it was heard all across the country. Right. Pastor arrested for worshiping God in a time when we weren't supposed to. You see, are we willing to make that sacrifice? Good, son. Are we going to be the next headline? Church closes down because nobody came to church. I mean, do you want that to be the headline? Or do you want the headline to be, Church in Allen, Texas, on fire for God, hundreds being saved. I don't know about you, but that's what I'd much rather hear. Sure. I'd much rather hear that. And it all depends on what we choose to do in our community, in our church, in our relationship with Christ, in the future generations of our children. You see, I was blessed by how much youth there is up there. Amen. A broken, broken hair. Yeah. I was shocked. Yeah. It's not very often you see a lot of youth right. that are actually dressed right. Yeah. And they're actually doing things the right way. And they're actually part of a church. And it's not bus kids, it's families. Right. When do you see that? It's, it's rare. And it was refreshing. I know for Hannah it was too. To see a, a big group of young ladies that are all yeah. sold out to God. A big group of young men, preachers. There's, I don't know, there's probably five or ten preacher boys in that church. Yeah. It, their church is on fire for God. And guess what? They were a church plant. Was yeah. it 45? 42 years. 42 years. 42 years. 42 years. And he was talking about remembering those times where him and his wife would look yeah. out the windows. Yeah. Just wanting one person to come to church. And look where they're at now. Yeah. I mean, a church, a church fellowship, about 125 to 150 people at a church fellowship. Yeah. Not even a service. When we were leaving on Saturday morning, they were having visitation. Yep. The parking lot was full. That's right. It was full for visitation. <laughs> you never see that. Never. Nobody's ever that sold out. I'm telling you, that's what I want for Harvest Baptist right. Church. And we don't know what God's plans are for the future here. But I tell you one thing. We need to make our very best effort for this church to be the next lighthouse right. in this community. There's no way, no way in our power that the six or seven of us can reach a city of 115,000 people. There's no way. There's no way at all. But with God's power, in God's timing, it will happen. Like he said, we will reap that reward if we so faithfully. We're going to have to strive, and it takes a lot of work. 
but it took a lot of work for our forefathers. Yep, yep. They did a lot of digging, a lot of time in the trenches. And if it takes us having a Bible in our hand and a gun in our other hand, then so help us, God, that we serve him until our last breath. Right. If that is what our future holds for us. But I want to make sure, I want to make sure that I know that I'm going to do that if I have to. And I hope you can decide in your heart that if that is what it takes for us to continuously hold our freedom and our country, then let's help us, Lord help us all, that we stand firm and make that payment and make that investment in our future. Amen. So that our future generations, if the Lord tarries is coming, what about 21, 24? What's this country going to look like? Is it going to be here still? We don't know. But let's do our best to make sure that in the next hundred years of America, there's still Bible preaching churches. And it might just start from Harvest Baptist Church, that we were able to have church plants started out of this church down the road yep. in this area and completely overpopulate the area with churches. I have no issue with that. Right. And I hope you don't either. I don't care if we have a church every quarter mile. It still probably won't be enough. Right. Because there's so many people. Anywhere there's people, there needs to be a staple. Yep. And yes, we don't have a steeple because we're not able to. But that steeple represents something. You've been driving. We've all drove down the road. And you, you catch a steeple. You just see one. It catches your eye. Automatically, you're going to turn and look at that. You know? It's just, there's something about it. There's something about a steeple. It catches your eye. Right. And everybody knows, well, that's a church. That's a sign of, oh, that's the church. Yeah. You know? They know that. Back in the day, every church had bell towers. There's yeah. still a lot of churches in the south that do. And they know every morning, every Sunday morning at 945, that bell's going to go off. And back in the day when that bell went off, everybody knew, time to get to the church. We got 15 minutes. Let's get to the church. They knew. See, would people even understand if we set a bell out here and ring it at 945 on Sunday morning? Would they know what that meant? Or would they just think, oh, that's cool, they have a bell. Would they understand if we put a steeple up on top of this church? Would they understand that's a place where you can hear God's word? Right. Would they even know? Or is that how, how much we have felt the next generation? Right. Is that how bad this generation is? This generation, it's sad. It's sad. The more time I've spent around this generation that I'm in, I'm part of, it, it hurts. It really makes me thankful for the investment that my parents have made in me and for the men of God that I've been blessed to sit under. These kids, they know nothing about what this country is, what this Word of God is. I have five, ten, maybe even eleven Bibles. And most of them are too rough to be opened because I've worn them out. Has one of them ever even had one Bible? Have they even, even opened a Bible and read through the pages about what, what's happened in the previous generations? About what the Lord did for us? About even though we... Even though in the beginning, Adam and Eve cut off communication with God because of their own foolish choice, he still knew he wanted them to be with him because he loved them. And he sent his own son, his own son, to sacrifice, and pay the most, the, the heaviest price ever, yep. laying down his own life, his own son. I mean, God can't even watch him. He had to turn his back on his own son. Just so we could be with him in heaven. Right. So we would have the opportunity to have that sweet and holy fellowship with the Lord. Aren't you so thankful that we have the ability Amen. to go and pray to the Lord? We have the ability to open up the Word of God? Aren't you? They wanted that. That's what they wanted. No. That's all they wanted. And what have we done with it? We have the rights. Right. We have the abilities. But what have we actually done with it? Nothing. You see... God's going to take away what we do not use. That's right. We know that's true. I would hate for the thing that he has to take away my, my, because my. we didn't use it to be our freedom to worship it. Yep, yep. How, how would you like that? Because we didn't honor it and we didn't reverence it enough that it said it's time. Yeah, I no longer care. You don't need it no more. You don't care about me. You've turned your back on me. Now I'm going to turn my back on you. Right. God cannot look at the situation of this country. He cannot. It's a miracle he hasn't destroyed us already. The amount of pride and haughtiness, lust that's in this nation, pride. 
That's all this month of June is about to them. That's all this whole month has been. It's just about pride. Now, granted, it wasn't as bad as it was the past few years. Because some people have started taking a stand against it, which is what's supposed to happen. But pride is the one thing. God hates pride. Right. And we have set aside a whole month in our country to celebrate pride. Literally, it's the month of pride. Right. God help us. Lord help us all. And the church is fault that this is happening. It's right, our fault. Right. We need to take blame and we need to take responsibility. You're right. Because a hundred years ago that would have never happened. That's right. A hundred years ago, the church knew what was right. Yeah. And the church had such an influence in the community that would never happen. A hundred years ago we still had dry cities. Right. Because the men of God proclaimed that's not right. Men like Billy Sunday would preach and preach and preach. Men like George Whitfield. They just stand and preach. Because they knew what it did to people's lives. Especially a man like Billy Sunday. Who actually understood the effects of that on someone's life. He turned his whole life around. He was, he was a rich man. Rich man. And he got saved and he knew. Everybody needs what I got. Right. And look what he did. He caused, he, he, the Lord used him so much. We had dry cities for years. Yep. Hundreds of years. It was 50 years ago, I think, somebody told us that there were still dry cities in North Carolina. Yep. And I remember was, I believe it was Cleveland. It was Cleveland, I think. They were going to open a place. I think it was Miss Belinda's dad. He was the only preacher in the area that stood against it. I think that's what it was. All the preachers in the following areas were fine with it. They said, we don't care. Just do what you want. And that's exactly what's happened. Yep. Look at us now. Every corner. There's a, there's a place where you can buy the booze. But is there a church where you can hear the word of God oh, in every corner? That's right. We have more liquid sin than we do anything in this country. Yep. The two things that we have more than anything, that's liquid sin. And the second thing is stupid dose of pride. Yep. It's ridiculous. And it all revolves around everything. And it all revolves around the church. Everything does. You see, George Washington understood what it was to walk with God. And that is why God had favor on him and his crew. Right. You, you tell me how 50 men wouldn't cause the ICC and didn't die. They didn't even have the proper clothes on. They didn't have shoes on their feet. How? Tell me how they didn't get frostbite and die. There's only one way. That's because God's favor was right. on them. Because they just wanted to honor his word. <laughs> There's nothing more they wanted. God can do the same thing in our generation today. You don't tell me that God's changed in 200 years? No. There's nothing changed at all. What's changed is our hearts. That's what's changed. And what we need to do is we need to get back to the place where people in America understand the one thing this country loves and the one thing this country honors more than anything is God. Right. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it was meant to be. That's how our founding forefathers have had it to be. That's why they put the Word of God everywhere. That's why there's Bible written everywhere. Verses everywhere. Even on the even when you go to Washington D.C. and look at the memorials, there's always there's a verse where it says, "In God we trust." Everywhere, everywhere, because they understood what those words meant. They didn't trust themselves to get across there whenever they had to go fight. Right. They trusted God. That's right. That's why I love that photo of the painting of George Washington yeah. kneeling next to his horse and right. Because the one thing he trusted to make his men get through and keep his men safe was God, and that's why God honored him so. What about us? What is the one thing we trust? Can we say we truly trust in God to keep us safe? Can we say we truly trust in God to protect us from the evils out there? Right. Or do we not want to put that much faith in Him? George Washington knew he could have died any moment. Sure. But he had trust in God. That God was not going to let that happen. Because he knew these people needed a place to freely worship. And what did they get? They got a place to freely worship. Right. He didn't know he was going to be the leader of that country down the road. He didn't know he was going to be the president. He had no idea. But God had honor and favor on him because he trusted in him. That is exactly what I want to be said about us in the next 50 years, the next 100 years. The Christians in America that made a change when the world was going down the hell in a handbasket. They stood up and made a change. That's what we need. That's why we need revival. Right. 
awakening. We need a great revival. They thought they needed a great awakening back then. Oh, my. Oh, boy, what would they do if they saw a word today? We don't need a great awakening. We need an awakening. Yeah. That's how bad we are. It doesn't need to be great. We just need an awakening. Right. Can God still use America? Can God still have favor on America? And I tell you, yes, he can. Yes, he can. Can God still use his preachers across the land? Yes, he can. Is there still churches on fire for God? Yep. Yes, but they are far and few. We need to continue to reach the cities and the countries all around us. Why are missionaries coming to America? Why? Why are other countries sending missionaries to America? America! The lighthouse. That's what America is. Right. You seen that Lady Liberty? What do you think she represents? Right. She's a light. Do you know what that light is? Freedom. Right. That's what it is. We want everybody to come to America. We do. But we want it to be done legally. And we want it to be done right. I have no problem with somebody moving to America. I want you in America. I want you to be able to have the same freedoms that I hold and enjoy. But I want you to do it the right way. Right. You see, God wants you to come to Him. He wants you to have that wonderful gift of salvation. Right. But you have to do it the right way. Amen. You have to come to Him and repent. <laughs> you have to understand that the only way to heaven is through yes. repentance and believing on the Lord. Amen. It's not hard. Just like it's not hard to come to America. There's so much ties in between the Christianity in our country. But how many times are they going to be down the road? Yeah. People got to understand what it means. When you say, oh, I'm a Christian, what's that? Yeah. Hmm? I said, I was, we were talking at work the other day. It was my last day, actually. I was in there. Was, we were early in the morning. We were talking about reading the Bible. And I said, the Pentateuch. I was like, oh, I made a mistake when I was young. I started reading the Pentateuch. And like, what's the Pentateuch? I mean, they say they're Christians. Oh, we read God's Word. But you don't even understand the basics. The first five books of the Bible, I, just, I had to explain to her for 30 minutes what that was. And she says, oh, I'm a Christian, and I always tell people about the Lord. Sad. Sad. Yeah, That's yeah. what we're living in. That's the modern Christian in today's world. I mean, can you even tell by looking at them they're a Christian? Nope. No. No. Nope. No, they're all tattooed up, and they're inked up, and they have piercings all over their face, and they have Bible verses down their arm. And I understand if you have a life of sin where you've come through in the past. But there's certain things that do change. And right. certain things are supposed to. We know people that have, they're tattooed up. And they're men of God that preach like nobody's business. Right. And they know how to rightly divide that word. But they know that they're not proud of that. Right, right. And a lot of them hide that. They don't want you to know that. Because that was their past. They don't want to even think about their past. That's how it's supposed to be. Yep, yep. When you get changed, you're supposed to be changed completely, made anew. You're supposed to change in the way you dress, the way you act, the yep, way you talk, yep. the way you walk. Amen. But it's not that real to us anymore, is it? My, my, my. It's just, oh, we're going to heaven. That's all that matters. Mercy. Oh, it's just an escape from hell. I didn't want to go to hell, so I got saved. Mercy. Do you have any shame at all? Do you? Do you have that shame face in this? When you see the sin in this late nation, do you look at it and do you get overwhelmed with the anger because God's offended? Or do you not care at all? When I look at what these people are doing to our children and what they're making them go through, the ungodly transitioning of genders, it hurts me because they don't know the right. They don't right. know what's right. right. They don't know what the word of God is. All they know is what so-and-so has told them. And that's what the Bible says. If you're to offend a youth, be better than you, the mouse was on her neck, and you were cast into the depths of the sea. Right. Those are God's children. That's why he said, Forbid them not to come unto me. Unless you be like one of these, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. A little child. You know why God loves children? Because they're humble. Right. Because they don't understand the true things that are out there. They just listen. That's what the, there's innocence there. And these people are taking away that innocence. And they're they're hurting them. And God is offended. Right. And we should be too. Yep. That's why we need to make a stand to make a change. These children, they're going to grow up 20 years down the road. And they're going to come to a point in their life where they actually have a realization of what they have done. And it's too late. I don't want that to happen. 
I want this next generation to come and stand up and not be afraid to be able to believe in this country, to not be ashamed of living in America. And I hope you want that too. Right. More important than anything. I want these people to not be ashamed to be Christians. Right. That's what we need more than anything. We need to not be ashamed to stand and proclaim the word of God. Because if we're ashamed of him, yeah. he's going to be ashamed of us. And that's the last thing I want for anybody. Could you imagine the Lord? Oh, you know, uh, sister so-and-so. And the, oh, yeah, I know them. Yeah. But they don't really know me. I mean, that's, I couldn't imagine the Lord shaking his head whenever my name's brought up. Mm. I mean, why would you want that for anybody? So we need to understand there is a price to pay. But are you willing to pay it? Are you willing to? Are you so selfish and greedy you want to hold everything in your hands and just enjoy yourself? Or are you willing to make the price and pay it for the next generations to come to be able to hold and love truly to this word right here? You see, I bought this Bible. I bought Daddy one and I bought me one. And every single person needs this book. This is the most important book. But there's other things that you need as an American you need to know. And that's why I bought this Bible. I can turn to the back of my Bible. And right here in the back of my Bible, yep. I have the Constitution of the United States. That is the second thing you need to know. We need to know that inside and out. We need to know every single amendment. We need to know our Bill of Rights. And we need to know our Constitution. Yep. That's Every single person needs to know that. Those are the two things you need in life. That's it. Two things as an American you need to read. You need to know, you need to know your Bible. That is the most important. Right. Second to that, you need to know your rights in your country. And you need to not be ashamed to proclaim those. They don't want us to know those. That's why they're removing it. That's why they're removing these statues that have the truth on them. Because they want to hide it. Don't be afraid to let your light shine. Right. That's why that torch burns. That's why that torch is up there in New York City. Though New York City is not what it was. That torch is a signal of freedom and a signal of help. For anybody in the night that sees it, when you're coming into the bay there, the first thing you're going to see is that torch held out towards the sky. And that torch is a signal for you. But we have a cross on a hill. Right. That stood on a hill. The signal for every child of God. And we need to look to that cross. We need to look to that cross for help. What do you guys have mind to when they need help? When somebody wants freedom, where do they come? They come to America. Right. When somebody needs help, where's the best place to go? Right. To the cross. The two things that mean the most. The cross... And that lamp of freedom. We need to understand those and hold them dear. That's all it is, simply. We don't need to take them for granted because we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised to be free in the morning. We can wake up tomorrow morning and a bill's been passed betting the Bible. What would your reaction be? Oh, well. Or would you fall on your face and say, dear God, help us? Yeah. What do we do now? We need to have a plan in place. We need to have a plan in place. We need to understand, all right, what are we going to do? The same thing we've always done. Right. If we get put in jail, God will be with us. If we get persecuted, the Lord will protect us. Right. That's all that matters. That's all stand. The Lord, I'm so thankful for your wonderful word that you've given us. Yes. Your precious word that you have written down for us to know through the generations. God, help us to never forget what it is cost the Lord for us to hold this Bible in our hands. The men of God that have laid down their lives so that we can have a copy in our hands. Lord, nowadays, sadly, I don't believe many people do understand the actual significance of your word. They don't respect it. Help us, Lord, to never get over what this book is, Lord. And help us never get over the freedoms that you have granted us in America because of our worship to you, Lord, and our, and our relationship with Israel, Lord. Keep us, Lord, close to you all the days of our life. Let us never get over it and what it's costing. The moment we get over it, Lord, I know you're going to take it away. Yes. Help us to never get over it. Thank you, Lord, so much for my blessings. You're my prayer. Amen. It's a well, my friends, we've just heard a message from the pulpit of Harvest Baptist Church. I pray that it was a help and a blessing to your life. This is no doubt a place where God's Word changes lives. If God's Word was a blessing or a help to your life today, we'd like to hear from you. Please write to us at Harvest Baptist Church, P.O. Box 110, Allen, Texas 75013. 
again is P.O. Box 110, Allen, Texas 75013. May God richly bless you and the preaching of His Word. Have a wonderful day.